Whew. Well, hello everybody. I'm coding horribly, and today we are going to try and get back into some live coding. I've decided that I would like to try and use this opportunity to build a DAP. Now, what is a DAP? A DAP is really just a made-up phrase for an application that's built on Ethereum. It stands for Decentralized Application. Um, building on top of Ethereum definitely presents its own unique challenges. Um, and I'd like to sort of document a process here of attempting to learn. I know a little bit about building on Ethereum. My knowledge could certainly be better. So I'm hoping to try and get through some you know, challenges, I guess. Also, like, you know, personal challenges, learning challenges, programming challenges. Let's see what we can do. So, let's give you a screen here. Let me just make sure that's actually working. Yes, it is. Great. Um, we're going to be using Austin Griffith's Scaffold, e Scaffold ETH to try and start off. Now, what Scaffold ETH is basically is first of all you can see over here create eth app so you may be familiar with create react app it's a react boilerplate that facebook has that makes building react app much more simple than it was before create react app at least um, it's sort of a boilerplate for react so that you can just start coding your react app right away without having to worry about configuring uh, configuring all sorts of stuff so then um, someone I'm forgetting his name right now built a ethereum version of that called create eth app and then Austin Griffith came and he built a lot of stuff on top of that he packaged in Beedler, which is um, sort of like truffle framework if you're familiar with that has some other cool things going on inside of it put in some custom hooks and some other stuff um, we are going to be working on that. I don't know how much I'm going to do other than maybe just installing this and playing around with it a little bit. I think that might be a good start. It's been a long time since I've tried using a streaming setup also, so I think some of this is also me just getting used to being here and doing that. So let's, without any further ado, get to get pointing. Get back in type. No, oh boy, let's just do that. So just give me one second. And I'll do, 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 get Good. Sorry about that. There we go. So. All right, so now we have a uh, scaffold ETH folder over here. And we're going to CD into it. Then, oh, uh, yeah. Yarn to start it. I'm just going to throw this up for a second because it's going to throw up something that I'm not really interested in. Oh, wait a second. I know I'm wrong. We're not even there yet. You'll know what I forgot to do was a yarn installed. Comes with all sorts of packages, so yarn just should install everything. You'll see that we're probably going to get a bunch of warning messages at the end of it, but they're of no major in particular concern to us. So... hanging right there at the left. For some reason, the last packages are always the beastiest ones to install. So here, waiting one more package to go, then it's going to have to install a bunch of things. Can twiddle our thumbs for a little bit as the forces that be inside my machine and the general internet at large attempt to process this Herculean task. Do, 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 do. Boom, we seem to be moving. Yes, Lent Airbnb. I wonder what that is. Is that like some Airbnb library? It's amazing, you know, you use a 
you use a scaffold or a framework like this, you've no idea, really just no idea what what's going on with it. I'm just gonna do this to take care of something. Oh wow, it's taking forever to do too. This is very interesting. For some reason, I'm getting some. Normally, there's something that would pop up here that I wasn't so interested in, but now I'm just getting this. Interesting. So I suppose this is our first challenge. All right, let's see what's going on here. These look only like, these look like they're only warnings. So those shouldn't be stopping the amp from launching. Let me try that again. There we go. There we go. Let me just take care of this real fast. I'm hoping this should work. Uh, waiting for localhost. There we go. Okay. Yeah, as you can tell, I'm using Brave, and this is exactly when I need, need pop-up ads, isn't it? Would you like to start crypto wallets for Web3 support on this page? Um, we're not going to do that right now. We might do it a bit later. Unhandled rejection error, missing response. Post server error. Oh, I think I know what the issue is. I apologize for the little pop here, but give me a second, I'll see if I can maybe figure out what's doing that. there, but that wasn't right at all. Unhandled rejection, missing response, server error, HTTP 8545, code server error. Hmm. Oh, maybe I need to have MetaMask up for this. That might be the case. Um, what's the... Probably just do it over here. I am still not the world's biggest expert with Brave, so you may have to bear with me here for a second. Straight up my downloads, extensions. Okay, I had thought that I had MetaMask here, but apparently I don't, which is just wonderful. Okay, this is going to give me a bit of a onboarding process. And I'm going to need to um, pop out. We're going to have to put up the secret screen to get it because this is going to give us a new MetaMask account. And I'm going to have to come up with like all sorts of passwords. Oh no, there's something 
up. going through the whole uh, seed phrase thing. They make sure that you've written down your seed phrase, so this takes a bit of time. My sincere apologies. Okay, now we are good to go. Boom. Okay, so now we've met a mask here. Let's see if that maybe helps us reload this. No, it doesn't. That's absolutely wonderful. Unhandled rejection. Missing response quest body. Server error. Logger make error. Logger throw error. Anonymous function. Rejected. It used to be one of five errors, and now it's the only one. So it makes me think that I probably did do some. Oops, excuse me. It makes me think that I probably did do something by uh, by adding in MetaMask. I wonder if it has to be pointing to a specific net. Does it need me to be running the chain also? Hmm. Let's see, what's it called? Scaffold. Chain. This will run a development chain in the background. And this will deploy all the contracts. Now, scaffold I think, only comes with oh, place, CD, scaffold ETH, and then do your own play. So you used to have something called smart contract wallet. It seems like maybe things have changed a little itty bit. You can see over here in the chain that it got deployed to chain. Um, yeah, almost. Happens to be, even if I'm already here, I will say the fact that he like has these nice touches, like you know the the coloring over here and whatnot, or like the little deploy emoji. I think make it this a lot more pleasant to use than it might otherwise be, which is actually super cool. So wait, let's try this again, because I'm not seeing the error. I think that's all we had to do. Yeah, very good. Okay, so now all we had to do to get rid of those errors were actually go through the first couple of steps, so I want to walk through that again. What we did is we ran three different commands. You'll see we have three different terminals here. So here we ran yarn start, which is basically just starts up the React app front end. Then we started a development chain going over here with yarn run chain. And then over here with yarn run deploy, we actually deployed contracts onto the network. You can see over here the address that we're using because this launches with a burner address. I don't know why it clicks through to either scan. It doesn't really make a lot of sense to me, but whoops, 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 there we go. Um, all right, I had put this up before because I had meant to say that if you want to know more about Scaffold ETH, you should check out Austin's um, Austin's YouTube videos. They're a load of fun. They're full energy. He runs through, like when he calls it a speed run, he means it. He literally goes running through what, like just how to get Scaffold ETH set up, which is nice and cool. But did I actually, looks like I closed the window by accident. So let's get this up again, localized 3000. 
Okay, and here we are. So, oh, I get it, because it's either scan. Okay, fine, whatever. I clicked on this, and apparently the whole window went to either scan as opposed to opening up a new tab. I thought it would do that. Edit your contract in packages Beadler contracts. Okay, so let's do that. Um, let's pull this up when I'm feeling more daring. So I do Vim. Give me a second, just because I'm opening up my file system over here. Okay, so edit your, what do you say to do here? Edit your contract, packages, beadler contracts. So we have packages, beadler, contracts, your contract dot so. Okay, you contract your contract, steam, the little string, public purpose, programming, unstoppable money. So I'm going to change this to re, uh, man, quitting with scaffold is I know yeah okay now saving a contract shouldn't change anything over here you see how the purpose hasn't changed maybe doing that well that'll be interesting I wonder what that does I'm not sure but I would think that I'd have to redeploy, redeploy the contracts so what I'm gonna do is I am going to go back up here I'm gonna redeploy And I'm gonna, oh, it, it auto-reloaded, that's cool. I thought I was gonna have to reload the page. You'll see now it's deployed to a new address and we have this new thing over here. Oh, but I don't even have to do it with contract, that's cool. I don't have to do it directly from the contract. I could put um, playing around with purpose over here. I wonder what that does, nothing, something. This front end used to be a little bit different. Ah, uh, okay, so tried sending. But the address, yeah, okay, so this is an old shtick of his. There, I copied this address. It, com it The way he does it, he loads a new wallet. So when we started up the dev chain over here, it came with a bunch of accounts and like preloaded ETH. But none of those are the address that the scaffold ETH front end starts off with. Um, as in, he sets you up with a new burner wallet, which I believe is a contract wallet, actually. So that's sort of cool. You're already sitting on a contract. Um, you can copy the address over here, and he has a little faucet built in, which then you can just faucet yourself up. Now you'll see all of a sudden we have a little bit of ETH, which he measures in dollars. So now if I do that... Okay, so I think this is the API, or no, it's the transaction object, I think. I'm not entirely certain. Your contract artifacts are automatically injected into your front end. So you notice the front end is already able to play around with the contracts, and what that means is that every time I compile the contracts, if I go down here into the React app, source, uh, where is it? I don't even remember. React app source app JS. Oh wait, no. Source con source contracts? Did I miss that? Yes, I did. It's right here. Staring at me. Got an ABI address, bytecode, all that stuff. It's sitting right here inside source. Cool. That's actually a bit new. I seem to remember it didn't used to do that. That's actually super helpful because what you'll see is sometimes in the front end, you need to import the ABI to be able to play around with the contract on the front end. And there's a problem with React that if you have files sitting outside source, outside SRC, that React will throw errors at you if you try and import them in. So it is super cool that um, now this actually gets compiled into your front end directly and you can just get at it through here. I'm actually curious, this seems to be a bit of a change in the architecture. I, I seem to remember this used to be somewhere else. Um, yeah, like over here. I wonder what this is now. Does seem to store all the ABIs. Hmm. Seems to be important from Uniswap. Funky. Um, in any event, back to the back to the task at hand. Edit your front end to packages React app source app JS. Why not? Oh, that's interesting. Now he has app JS X. He used to have that in app JS. He has hints now too. That's not. 
Yeah, he has, he has seriously refactored this since the last time I was playing around with him. Oh, he's Web3 modal by default now. I don't think he was before. Maybe he was. I don't even remember. Oh, that's a bit interesting. That, that could work a little bit better. You can see that this, uh, this part right here can mask that. This should probably be above it. Um, yeah. So let's see what we got here. It's using use callback, use effect, and use state from React, pulling out all the big guns. Um, he uses a styling library if you're familiar with Material UI, so instead of that, he uses something called AntD. Infura provider, JSON RPC, Web3 provider from Ethers project providers. So, okay, Ethers is a JavaScript library that helps you interact with the blockchain. Um, Web3.js is probably a little bit more famous. Ethers.js, in my general experience, is a little bit easier to work with. Um, import app.css, so I'm assuming that's where all the CSS is going to sit. Realm column from AntD, Web3 modal, which is a interface for connecting wallets to websites, essentially. Um, it'll let you connect all sorts of different kinds of wallets to, to a website. Wallet connect provider. So that's what we saw before when I oh, messed something up. Uh, what happened here? Who knows? When in doubt, reload. Cool. Uh, yeah. So before when I clicked on connect, so you get wallet connect. So that's the wallet connect thing. I'm not exactly sure. Maybe if I click on that? No. Hmm. I'm not exactly sure how to get to the web three modal. Could be I'd have to activate that somewhere else in the code. Though it doesn't really make a difference right now. Here we have some of his um, custom hooks, which he seems to have subdivided. Wait, what's this F hooks business? Hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess that's a... Oh, that must be a package. Yeah. Just want to try and understand what's going on here. Yeah, FX, there we are. Okay. So, interesting. Use, use user address and user balance. What is this F hooks thing, though? I'm actually sort of curious. M P M F hooks. I, got, I, I wonder if it's him, actually. That's really why I'm checking. F hooks NPM. Because that reminds me of some hooks that were in the old one. Public, published seven days ago. Yeah, okay, so this is him. You can tell that this is the same hooks that used to have homepage Austin Griffith. Um, these used to exist just raw in the old scaffold ETH, but now apparently he's published them as an NPM package, which is actually sort of cool. Uh, use exchange price, use gas price, use, ETH use user provider from hooks, header account faucet RAM contract from components, hints from hints, and Fura ID from constants. Oh, so he's using his Infura account. Web3 modal equals new Web3 modal, network mainnet optional, cache provider true. Well, okay, and here we go. So here we have a Web3 modal, which is giving you wallet connect. You could put other options in here and you'd be able to connect with them. Like you could probably put in like, I don't know what, Portis or Gnosis Safe or um, things like that. And you'd be able to connect those. Providers. So you'll notice over here that these dollar prices are based off of the current price of ETH on the mainnet. So he needs to be able to connect to the mainnet for that. So what he does over here is he connects to Infura in order to be able to just give prices on these widgets. It also means that the app, this whole scaffold ETH thing, if we want to look at it as an app, would be able to connect to uh, to mainnet if you would so desire. Local chain provider, new JSON RPC provider. So that's connecting to our dev net, which is running over here, uh, which is really what we're playing around with when we play around with this. So here we see if there is a process.env and if there is, we connect to that. Otherwise it just listens on 8545, which is Beadlert's default. Now that means if you're running a node on 8545, you may have some trouble clearing that up and getting this to connect right. Um, so you can try changing it here to try and change the port. 
Um, if you do that, don't forget also in package JSON, you're going to need to look at, wait a second, where am I? I'm in the wrong package JSON. There's a few different package JSONs, which can get confusing. But you see over here are his scripts. So you're also going to need, when you run the chain, which is this one, or if you run a node, and I think maybe some of the other ones also, you're going to need to put in an argument for port, like so, and then put in whatever port you want. Um, a simple way to do that would just be to search in project for 8545 and any anywhere that points to 8545 to change. I'm not sure that's enough to make everything work out, but it's at least a reasonable start. Um, all right, so where are we? We were looking at the code in app. App, 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 app. User provider, use your injector provider from MetaMask. Or if you don't have it, then instantly generate a burner wallet. User provider, user provider. So wait, is this using MetaMask? Is this the same address? No, they're totally different addresses. Interesting. Objective provider, local chain provider, const address. Oh, I sort of skipped over some stuff. I just realized that. We were up here. Log out of Web3 modal. So this is a way of logging out of that. If you're connected here, you'd get a log out. But this is just the function it'll call when you do that. So it calls Web3 modal and basically logs out of that. And here we get to the actual app function. So first he has something called injected provider, which is whatever provider is getting injected in so that it automatically connects to like MetaMask or whatever wallet you've got put in, which will let you sign stuff. Injected providers in general, I'll admit, I don't have like the best handle in the world on the different terminology, but um, you've got two ways of connecting to the chain really. Um, one's just for reading. As in, let's say you want to know what the most recent block was. You want to see transactions from five blocks ago or general just read information like that. So that you, that's like one level of provider, so to speak. All you need is something that can connect to the blockchain and read it. But you also are going to want most, well, depending on your use case, you may want, there we go to connect to the chain and actually make state changes, send transactions, um, interact with contracts in a way where you're changing state. So you're gonna need to sign things. You're gonna need to sign messages or send transactions. So for that, I know that you'll usually see this phrasing of injected provider come in, as in it's injecting a provider from your wallet with your keys that you'll be able to sign stuff with. Const address, use user address, user provider, use user address. Was that a, ah, oh, that's from the ETH hooks right there. Okay. Address, use user address, user provider. So he's doing this, using this user, oh no, use user address and use user provider. But he uses the provider to use the user address. That's interesting. This one gets you your balance. Interesting. Here he loads the Web3 modal that he made before. He calls the use effect down here. That's interesting. So that, and okay, fine. And anytime there's a change to the Web3 modal, it re renders. For those who don't know use effect, I don't know how deep I'm going to go on React stuff, but basically, use effect is. Um, in the more functional hooks world of React. Um, it's, I'm going to give a really, really like um, not accurate answer here and say that it's a way of getting things to load up when the page loads to run as soon as the page loads and then to run again however often you want. Um, like if this, if these brackets would be empty, so it would just load when the page renders and it wouldn't load again. Um, here, where he put in load, load web three modal, that means any time that load web three modal is called, use effect will run again. And here we have the return where he basically renders the page. So we have div class name app classic header, which is going to be one of the comp components over here. We can already guess what that is, though. It's going to be this stuff. Um, so he has a header. Then he has this fix text line right, right zero, da, 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 da. padding 10 account, and it's going to be the account information. OK, 
account, address, local provider, mainnet provider, price, diff. Oh, wait a second. So that, I believe, is actually this. The header must be something else. Maybe that's the header. You can see he's passing a lot of things in here as props. The address, local provider, user provider, mainnet provider, price, web3 modal, load web3 modal, log out of web3 modal. Interesting. This scaffolding is full of commonly used components. This contract component will automatically parse your ABI and give you a form to interact with it locally. Wow. Cool. Essentially what that's supposed to mean is that if you dump a contract into contract and load it over here, that it should just give you a form that lets you play around with the contract. That is actually super duper useful. And then... On the bottom, we have sort of the bottom stuff with the faucet and things like that. Cool. Whew. Edit your front end. Explore the hooks and components. That'd be a good idea. For example, use the use balance. The, the use balance hook keeps track of your balance and yeah, <laughs> it tells you what your balance is right there. To so build your app, you'll need Web3 specific components like an address input component. Try putting in your address or your EMS address or scanning the QR code. Okay, if you say so, Mr. Griffith. I don't really see anything happening there. Oh. Hmm? You don't really get anything else. Maybe it just gives me the Favicon over there? Not really sure. Alright. Contract hints. Uh, that, uh, okay, and he's calling this hints, maybe? Yeah, I guess he's calling this hints. He used to call this timeline. Deploy that test in our mainnet by editing that and running yarn deploy. Oh, okay, yeah, we did that, and it deployed to testnet. And then you can ship yarn run surge. S3 or IPFS, and you can join a Telegram chat. Okay, so that's an initial sort of playing around with us. Um, I could start going through the components, maybe trying to dig in a little bit deeper. I don't think I have the head for that right now. Something that I said really briefly before, but I do want to say again, is that there are multiple package JSONs here. Like you see, there's a package JSON here. This package JSON is only for the React app. Whereas this one is for all the different workspaces inside of the app. This can make a difference when you're using Yarn to add new packages. Um, and a couple of other things also, just in terms of what you're typing in. If you're running into issues that seem sort of NPM or Yarn related, you might want to just think for a second about where you are in your terminal and what you're trying to add to and what you're trying to run. I think there's another one in Beadler, for example. Package JSON for Beadler. Um, there may be another one here, even. Yeah, there's another one. So there's a grand total of four package JSONs floating around in this package. Good to bear that in mind. Um, so, I think I'm probably going to call this a day for now. Been a bit of a short kind of stream. But, like I said, we're just trying to get back into it. We now have this scaffold ETH framework here. And I'm hoping next time that we maybe start either tinkering around a little bit with it or maybe even start pulling some stuff out and trying to build on it. And so that's all for now. If I, if I, if I can speak. That's all, for, that's all for now. There, I actually, I said that. Only took me a few tries. Bye now.